Right, so as I indicated earlier, we're starting with the breaking news, which has to do with the decision taken by the FIFA's adjudicatory chamber, and it involves uh, handing a lifetime ban to Kwesi Nyantechi, former president of the Ghana Football Association. He's been banned from all football-related activities uh, for life essentially, both national and international. And this statement came through in the last uh, uh, hour, and it says the adjudica adjudicatory chamber of the Independent Ethics Committee has banned Mr. Kwesi Nyantechi, former president of the Ghana Football Association, GFA, for life from all football-related activities, administrative sports, or any other at both national and international level. The adjudicatory chamber found Mr. Nyantechi guilty of having violated Article 19, conflict of interests, Article 21, which uh, has to do with bribery and corruption, and Article 22, commission of the FIFA Code of Ethics, 2012 edition. As a consequence, Mr. Nyantechi is banned for life from all football-related activities, administrative, sport, or any other at both national and international level. Additionally, a fine in the amount of 500,000 uh, Swiss francs has been imposed on Mr. Nyantechi. The decision was, notif ha was notified to Mr. Nyantechi today, and the ban comes into force immediately. So that's the very latest we're getting from FIFA in the last uh, one hour. And it has to do with the expose on uh, corruption conducted by investigative journalist Anas Aremia. Anas, and joining me in the studio right now is uh, Hans Mensa Ando, who is my colleague here. He's with the sports team here at Joy News. And he's going to be taking us through some of the issues raised in the petition uh, that was handed over to FIFA by investigative journalist Anas Aremi Anas in the wake of the number 12 documentary which he put out uh, some time ago now. So, uh, Hans. Uh, Thanks for making time to join us. So I want you to take us through the petition that uh, Anas Sermia Anas uh, submitted to uh, FIFA, which has to do with the uh, Kwesi Nyantechi and the fact that allegations that uh, he had taken a bribe. Okay, well, so um, first of all, let me mention that if you go through that petition, it, it, it was watertight, you know, very, very tight in the way that it was fashioned out. Um, he talks about the investigations he carried out, particularly the period within which he carried out um, that particular um, investigations, and um, also um, goes through the outcome of um, that um, particular investigation, that is um, Anas Arimeyao um, Anas. And so, um, so um, very, it's, it's a seven-page petition that he um, presented um, to FIFA now. Um, it was presented through his lawyers, Kisi Ejabin, and um, Anas referred to several provisions of the FIFA um, Code of Ethics, um, Article 15, 19, 20, 21, 22, and the FIFA Decimal Code, Article 61 and 62, which um, the resigned FA president may have breached um, at the time. And um, like I said, it was a seven-page um, document that uh, was presented as far as that petition um, was concerned. So... He attached the video um, of that particular um, investigative piece um, to the number 12 documentary, the, the number 12 documentary was shown widely exactly. here in and, Ghana um, and uh, even on the BBC. He also captured audio and transcribed um, what was in the audio um, and um, handed it over to FIFA. So um, it, it's, it's, like I said, very, very tight. Uh, it was going to be very, very difficult for if had to come out with any other outcome um, yeah. apart from what they served on Mr. Kwesinian Tichi to the end. Um, you know, he detailed um, stuff like his involvement with government and the fact that he goes talking about, you know, getting contracts for, for, for some people. And um, the fact that, you know, he mentions the president and the fact that he mentions um, bridge, um, how do you call it? Um, increasing the power of government officials in order to get those contracts for those people. So very, very detailed. It, it has um, receipts, um, travel receipts and stuff like that, um, the audios, um, the video. So very, very tight. And um, 
Um, I'm sure. I think we found a story on my, on my draw online dot com. The documents are out there on my journal. Right. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Hans Mensa. And uh, so th those are the uh, details, the copies exactly. of the petition that exactly. you can see on your screen right now. But joining me on Skype, via Skype right now is uh, my colleague, uh, Gary R. Smith. And he and all other uh, sports journalists have been following this uh, very um, th this story very keenly. And uh, he's going to be explaining to us exactly what it means when they say that he Mr. Nyantechi has been banned from all football-related activities. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gary. So you tell us, what does it mean when FIFA says, or the adjudicatory, adjudicatory chamber says, that uh, Mr. Nyantechi has been banned from all football-related activities? Well, like it said on the uh, communication, you noticed that was passed that was in fact, which said administrative sports or any other. So those words give idea exactly they are talking about. Which means administrative, he can't hold it as an official one of stars, which he was the CEO of the Ghana Premier. He couldn't hold it as Ghana football position president. He couldn't hold himself as executive committee back the GFP. He couldn't hold himself as second vice president of the Federation of African people, and he couldn't himself as the president of the WAFU, the West African Football Union, to be. Most of all, the biggest one, that he couldn't hold himself as a FIFA executive council member. That's what I mean. Now, he can't go and watch football in any capacity. That's the sport. Then the other side that is any other. It's left to your imagination. All right, Gary, you talk about the fact that he can't go and watch any football match. Is that really the case? In official capacity. All right. In official capacity. There's, there's so he can buy a ticket and go as a fan, go and watch um, a certain games. However, from my reading of recent things, during this past World Cup, Seblata went to watch the games on the request of Vladimir Putin. And that was an issue in the international media. But the Ambassador Black also has a very lengthy back because of his um, activities and him trouble as well. The defense was, he was given an invitation or it went at the beginning for the request of the Russian government. He could go and watch the game. So in certain jurisdictions, they would interpret it as meaning that if people say you can't have anything to do with or you can't even come at the fan, but um, most of the time you can go into it and watch at the fan, it won't be content. If some people didn't really bet, they will take it to that level. No, so there's been this joke that's been uh, passed around. They say that even if he sees uh, some small boys playing football, uh, <laughs> cold football, he can't, he can't stop to watch. I would want to think that that's actually a joke. That, that's that, because um, don't forget that FIFA is an organization that subscribes to international law and um, human rights when convention is not No matter what she has done, he's a member of an association and he has done things that go foul the rules of the association. But you can't deny his inalienable rights to life, a certain basic right. He has the right to breathe, to eat. All right, we're losing Gary there on the Skype connection. We have Augustine Ahimfo, former Black Star forward. He's joining us on telephone. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Mr. Ahimfo, and thanks for making time. Now, how does this news come across to you? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it is very sad, but uh, that is a decision for FIFA, so we just have to move on. Did you think it was going to come to this? Obviously, yes, because of the measures that FIFA has put in place since what happened happened under Sir Blatter. And so I knew that uh, there was going to be some sanctions, but as to the life ban, I wasn't expecting that. So are you suggesting that probably the, 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 the life ban is too severe a sanction? I believe so. 
Because when you say life, or what is life? And I, I think I heard you ask a question that he could not even stop to watch a game. I don't think it's part of it. Okay, that's actually a joke. Yes, it turns but uh, I think uh, if we had gotten, uh, I mean, some years attached to the suspension, then obviously we could know that this was where we are heading towards. But for life and also... Uh, the financial uh, penalty that has been given to him, I think it's a bit severe. Now, severe as it is, don't you think that uh, it will send the right message to you know, shake up the, the system as uh, everybody has been hoping will happen? Israel, that should tell us that it gets to a point we should not let power corrupt us. We should know when to give up and when to say that enough is enough. Uh, I think what has happened has happened. And it's, it's there for a lesson for all of us. No one should be happy for what has happened because it could be me, it could be you, it could be somebody else. We should all learn lessons out of this. And then uh, I think in the future, if you think you are doing something which is untoward, then this should be several, like a deterrent for you not to do that. So it is sad, but uh, we have to move on. Now. This is a guy or this is somebody who played a key role in the affairs of uh, the Ghana football, the Black Stars and everything else. How are your colleagues or have you had the chance to speak with some of your colleagues about uh, this decision taken by FIFA and how are they responding to or reacting to it? Uh, you see, as human beings, uh, not, none of us feels that uh, even your worst enemy should find himself in a situation like this. But like I earlier on indicated, uh, when we are in power, uh, we, we should be careful about the things that we do, the decisions that we make. And so uh, it's, 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 it's like a caution to all of us that in the future, if, let's say, myself, I'm in a position, I should respect the position that I hold and also do things that uh, uh, are in line with the position that I hold. And so it is not a good thing, but like I've stated, it has happened. And uh, we shouldn't have allowed this thing to happen. I mean, got into where it got to. Uh, the people around the president, the former president, I've always said that did not help him. And it got to a point we should have all been able to, 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 to tell him that, look, this is time you, get, you, get, you have to give up, let somebody come in. We wouldn't have been where we are if that has happened. But it didn't. So uh, we, we just have to learn lessons out of it. That in the future, nothing like that will, will, be, will come before us. I mean, it, it's sad, but uh, we just have to put ourselves together and then hope that in the future we will not find ourselves. Because this oh, is Ghana. It's yeah. not an individual. M Mr. The Info, name Ghana. Mr. Info, you indicated that uh, you thought that he should have probably uh, quit uh, at some point in time. When did you think was the right time for him to quit? Two years ago, four years ago, ten years ago? Not really, because I, I believe that we all know that the last elections that was held by the, the F or the executive committee, there was the understanding that that was going to be his last term. And subsequently, he declared uh, that he, he was considering not contesting again. And I believe that uh, this is where uh, those around him should have helped him. Right. But they, 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 they allowed him to come back uh, to the extent that people from within and outside all started speaking on his behalf, and he kept mute over it. And, and uh, to the extent that the CAF president was here saying that we should allow him to contest for another term and all that. And I believe all these things uh, really touched on and asked to do what he did. All right. I personally believe that if he had stepped aside or decided that, look, I am not going to contest again. I, I think I've done enough and I'm going to leave for the people left behind to come in. This thing wouldn't have come before us. All right. And because he did not, uh, the likes of Anas and, and his people decided that, look, uh, right. we've stated about this issue, and then uh, because you are the helm of affairs, 
we are going to tackle you. And unfortunately, uh, he fell for it. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Augustine Ahimfo. That was uh, former uh, Black Stars uh, uh, forward, Augustine Ahimfo. Now, we're also joined uh, via Skype uh, by Jerome Autry, the management member of Dreams FC. Now, Jerome, thank you for making time. What does this mean for Ghana football? Our football has been battered because this is not the first time official of Ghana or is suffering a ban from FIFA. We head of ref jail today. He was slapped with a, a ban by FIFA for, I mean, some wrongdoing. It, it goes to show you that the last year or so, football has suffered so much. And I think that this Yantechi ban more or less uh, summarizes all the problems that our football has faced over the years. Like, Guess now, him for say, some of us saw this come. I mean, people started talking about the fact that he has was stayed there to go, and people defended him. People rationalized why he needed to continue as a teacher. But yeah, if if you've studied, I mean, how leadership has been on every continent, this is how that was his guest this dream in the end. I'm not happy. With us to start Christian, but it is a clear indication that if you lead an organization and you get to the point where the very people who put you there feel that you have served and you have to lead, I think you must go. All right, uh, thank you, Jerome. But do hold on. We also have on phone uh, Alaji Raji, the former chairman of the Ghana League Clubs Association, Gaka. And he worked uh, with uh, the former GFA president, Kwesi Techi. He also happens to be a friend. Thank you very much. Now, what, how do you think uh, Mr. Kwesi Techi is taking all of this? Well, uh, thank you. I have not heard from him. I have not seen him. Uh, but I think... Uh, uh, with a little contact that I had with him, I think he's well connected to have been notified about this uh, uh, ban. I'm very sure this or which before today. And I, I think by now he should be able to have so the necessary uh, uh, cushion around it so that uh, he, could, he will be able to absorb what has come. Now, Augustine, I we spoke with him a short while ago, and he's suggesting that this, uh, the sanction is uh, a bit too harsh. Is that something you agree with? Well, you know, I'm a student of history. There is a time for everything, a time to start a thing and a, start, a time to end it. And uh, I believe what uh, my good friend has gone through for the past three, four, five months, uh, especially... Uh, after the analysis, we say, because I know that I don't think uh, this will be too much of a bother to him. I don't think so. Right. Now, we also know that he owns uh, WA All Stars and uh, he has a stake in there. Now, how will this play? Is it that he has to relinquish his interest in WA All Stars or cede it to somebody else? How exactly is this going to play out? Well, uh, I think naturally, naturally, uh, I believe. Uh, if, if I were him, you know, for the past six months or five months, my, my interest in the administration of football will have dwindled a lot, will have dwindled to the extent that uh, I'll, be, I'll be rethinking about my, my, you know, participation in administration in any football club in this country. And I believe he's a, he's a very smart guy. He's very, very sensible, very intelligent. Especially, I have given him so much respect that he has been able to go through all this pressure. I know the mental pressure that he has been through, and he has survived it. I believe that uh, uh, we have, we have like, like any, like uh, any footballer after after your football years. There's, there's more life, more life after that. He's just 50 years, maybe yesterday or, or two days ago. He has more years ahead of him to engage himself in other, other, other other department of life. So I, I believe he has, he has pushed himself very well for this day. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Alaji Raj. But uh, I'll come to you, uh, Gary and uh, Jerome, quickly. I want to find out, 
do you think this will bring closure to the Anas expose, or you think that uh, Mr. Christine Yantej would, would want to continue to fight this case in court? Well, I think it is, it is up to him to decide. In the, in the legal courts, probably might have a chance there. But from the uh, story coming from FIFA, I think even if he goes for an appeal, I don't see how he's going to survive that. Because the FIFA communicates very clear, states exactly what he did. He violated certain articles of, of FIFA, and he's had the punishment for it. A lot of lessons that Ghana football, all of us in football in Ghana, take from this. You cannot be in the game, engage in corruption, and go scot free. What has happened to Mr. Nyantji is something that all of us must learn from. Like I said, I'm not happy, but in that looking at the interest of the game, it is very important for all of us. All right, thank you very much, uh, Jerome. And uh, you, Gary? So, Gary, I was asking, uh, do you think this will bring closure to the number 12 expose, or you think that Christine Yantichi is going to uh, continue to fight this case in court? All right, we appear to have uh, lost uh, Gary there. So, but just, uh, just to recap the story that we're dealing with, the breaking news that we're dealing with in the last uh, 30 minutes or so. The former Full Ghana Football Association president, Kwesi Nyanteki, has been handed a lifetime ban from all football related activities. Additionally, he used to pay a fine of nearly half a million dollars. And uh, we have been discussing this decision, which was taken by the Judicatory Chamber. I have uh, with me here in the studio Hans Mensa Andor, who I started the conversation with. So I was asking, do you think that this will bring uh, finality to? Uh, Nyantechi's quest to get justice or fight the case in court? It's, it's a very, very tricky one um, because, uh, you know, it's not too clear the implications this particular conclusion reached by FIFA has on the existing case here in Ghana. Um, if you remember, the Attorney General's Department are also working um, to see whether, you know, they are going to prosecute him or not. And that's also petitioned the AG's Department you know, to investigate the issue and then um, see whether they are going to be prosecuted. The last we heard of it was that the Attorney General said they, they don't have enough um, assistance to prosecute Mr. Kwesi Nyantichi. He has got a lot, of, a lot of people, you know, asking questions as to how FIFA is able to, based on the same evidence presented by Anas, find Mr. Nyantichi guilty um, of the various breaches of FIFA statutes and why the Ghanaian government is unable to. Of course, you have to know that um, the two you know, issues as far as FIFA and the AG is concerned are mutually exclusive. But that said, I think that the standards of corruption, um, um, at least in principle, wouldn't differ too much in FIFA statutes and the Ghanaian constitution. So it will be very tricky what decision Mr. Kwesinian teaching himself comes to, knowing also that he's a lawyer, knowing very well that look, if I appeal and I lose, the, the, it could have an implication on the case in Ghana as well. So very, very interesting what decision he is going to make. But one thing is certain, I think that the Anas expose is yielding results, and right. it's, it's refreshing to, to, to know that. All right, thank you very much, Hans Mensa And Hans Mensa Ando will be back uh, in about one hour with the sports update. What's coming up in sports? Definitely, we'll bring you more on this particular issue, um, as well as um, other big stories making headlines around the world of sports. All right, thank you very much, Hans Mensa Ando.